This is 9 o'clock. So during the month of August, I went on a short solo trip in Kyoto. To be more cost and time effective, I decided to take the night bus from Hiroshima to Kyoto. Given that there is still not foreign tourists at the moment, I wanted to take this uh, opportunity to see Kyoto in this uh, kind of atmosphere. It's the sad truth, but given that I'm in Japan, I really wanted to uh, at least take advantage of this uh, situation. It was my fourth time in Kyoto, so I didn't follow the typical um, first time in Kyoto itinerary. I made a, a mix between popular places, but also a location I've never been before. So still, if you are planning a trip to Kyoto when that will be possible, I'm sure there will be a valuable information in this video. I took so many pictures and footage and I hope I will be able to deliver that experience to you in the best way possible. I started my first day there with an early hike at the Fushimi Naitaisha. And yeah, let's uh, start this adventure from there. So after an extensive tour of the Fushimi Naitaisha, I went to visit two other shrines. 
Um, both are quite remote in the east part of the city and uh, I would say that the first one, the one that you already saw, was not particularly special and the second one that is coming now um, was really nice but could worse making the trip there in autumn I think. It seems that at this time of the year it's really full of beautiful red maple leaves. So after walking quite a lot this first morning and a copious lunch, I decided to head back to the hotel and take a nap because uh, the night before in the bus I didn't have the best sleep ever, you can imagine. So a quick stop to charge the batteries, my own and uh, my cameras too, before heading to this area called uh, San Nezaka. This is where you can find the uh, Kyo Mizudera and also the Yasaka Pagoda two extremely famous places in Kyoto but actually I've never been there before because I always feared that it could be too crowded and not, not really worth the trip. This time obviously it was not and I was really not disappointed. Let's check it out. I had a quite short but really good night to sleep and went on an early morning photography session around my hotel. The day before I spotted some really cute and narrow alleyways that I wanted to capture early in the morning and yeah I'm quite lucky to be on the early bird side of spectrum and I really enjoyed these uh, really early morning walks.
And then I decided to go to the bamboo forest and I was really curious to see how empty it is those days. You will see by yourself, but uh, it was still quite a shock for me to see uh, how empty it is even at nine o'clock in the morning which is not that early i think we can agree on that after that i came back in the city center to have lunch and a quick peek at the nishiki market Another quick stop in the middle of the day. It was just so hot around 3, 4 o'clock that I couldn't get anything interesting in terms of uh, photos or videos. So I'd better just uh, rest for one, one hour and a half. But then I headed towards the Guillaume district for a night walk and a photo session with my 85 mm I had quite high hopes for it and uh, I can tell you that I was not disappointed.
And it was already the third and last day of this trip, which I started with another morning photo session with my Ricoh GR3 and my iPhone. I wanted to try this light setup, the Ricoh for the photos, and my iPhone to try to get the atmosphere of the streets with some videos. Then I checked out of the hotel and headed out to the city center to find a strategical place to put my bag in a coin locker before the night bus later that night. My last big target for this trip was the Eikando Zeninji. Not an easy one to pronounce, right? It is not very well known, so even in normal times it is not that busy apparently. But I can't really understand why, because it was such an amazing place. The area is quite large and uh, different buildings to, to visit. A peaceful atmosphere was raining and some vegetation everywhere.
So I was quite tired after all this uh, walking, so I decided to take that last afternoon quite uh, easy. I walked a little bit more around the Philosopher Pass, discovered some hidden shrines. I managed to take a few shots and footage here and there before heading back to the city center to have a last dinner and get ready to take the bus back to Hiroshima. <laughs> And here comes the end of this trip, so if you're still there, I'm really thankful for that. I would be glad if you can give a little like or a comment to this video. I'm really grateful and lucky to have had this experience to go to Kyoto in such uh, strange times. As a photographer, it was a good opportunity, but to be honest, as a human being, it was quite sad to see that um, people are, are I think they are expecting some, some tourists to, to come back. Um, there is some economical difficulties uh, and I don't know how much longer the government can keep up and give some support. I guess they are not giving support to everyone because uh, I've seen so many shops closed where it was written on it like uh, tenant boshu, which literally means that they are looking for someone to uh, just take over this place and start a new business but still looks that it's not the perfect timing yet but uh, we are hoping that the situation will improve really soon and that everyone can enjoy Kyoto and Japan in the really close future. And that's it for this video, I think. Uh, thanks again if you're still there. Um, don't forget, don't please others, stay true to yourself, and we'll catch up in the next one. Bye.